This is Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, a weekly podcast for game show enthusiasts. Episode number 20. Please turn to Side B. Recorded April 30th, 2016. Because it's the 2010s and they're just bringing back every property that executives can get their hands on, Match Game is getting a revival, which Uh, none of us saw coming. No, I don't. I didn't see it coming. I don't know if any of you saw it coming. No, 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 no. Match Game is coming back. It's going to be on ABC. Alec Baldwin is going to host it. What do we think about this? I mean, the thing with Match Game is... It has to be done well for it to work. We have had some pretty off revivals in the past. And I love Match Game. It is arguably my favorite game show of all time. I think at its best, it's something that primarily fit the 70s and early 80s well. So we have to see how they make it work in now the 2010s. We have not had a Match Game in the U.S. yet in the 2010s first century how can they make that work here's a little behind the scenes we as a group outside of this uh particular podcast we like to play games we like to play cards against humanity and uh, a game from the fine folks that make you don't know jack those same folks make a game called quiplash that we like to play and i feel like those games that we do play outside of this call are very similar to match game i feel like if you don't try to focus very difficult on how uh how to make the show more contemporary for 2016 how far can you go or you think you can't go far enough because people have already gone farther than that this century i think you're going to fail in trying to find the thing to do and you'll either go the match game 98 route where just it's like way too much or you'll just go the route where it's like okay now we're doing match game 70 whatever in the 2016s and it's like it's not enough i think if you study those two games that i mentioned you can have a lot of fun still get very risque but not go over top and i think that's what they can do here do you feel like that having family feud having as much success as it's had in the 2010s along with games like hollywood game night and celebrity name game do you feel like the success of those shows is what led to them deciding that match game deserved the revival the thing i find interesting about it is that i think match game was doing that sort of stuff first oh no it was it was it was it was match game match game was the bad boy in the 70s yeah I mean, I would think the success of Family Feud in general, not necessarily even Celebrity Family Feud, but just Family Feud success, I think, could could have pushed Fremantle to go this direction. Then part of this might not be Fremantle. Part of this might be a lot of ABC. Uh, I think one of the guys who's like in charge of ABC's uh, programming posted a tweet the day that they announced this match game. He posted a tweet earlier in the day of uh, of the old long sony ecm uh so i think there's it's part abc that wants to try to make a huge push for game shows and they're dipping their hand into the well of not only just Fremantle but sony as well what do we think about alec baldwin announced as the host of this show i think it's weird to see alec baldwin on a network that's not nbc personally it's gonna be very interesting alec baldwin it doesn't exactly he's a great comedian i have no questions to that but compared to the guys they've had including in match game canada we have a different personality here he's not exactly the i'm going to be eccentric comedian like Gene Rayburn was, like Derek Rose is, not Derek, excuse me, eh, Darren Rose is. <laughs> um, Close, hosting match game. Yes. <laughs> He'll walk down the step and sprain his ankle. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> the idea is that, I mean, he's got like a, I guess I don't know the better term, is like deadpan delivery that, I mean, works for him quite well. Doesn't work in match game. And that's where I'm like, if he doesn't try to be someone he isn't, it should work like a charm. I mean, I think this is something he wants to do. One of the things that I found very interesting about Alec Baldwin taking the hosting job is that he's not even keeping the money he gets from hosting match game. He is going to donate it to his wife's charity in supporting the arts. So 
if he's getting no money out of this for himself, I think he must really want to do it. Man, you know you make a lot of money when you can take on another job and just say, oh, just take the whole check and take it to the charity. I wish. Alec Baldwin clearly has enough television experience where I'm not really concerned with him being a host. I, I don't think he has very much game show experience as a, as a contestant or a celebrity or anything like that. But I feel like he has the personality and the eccentricity needed for a game like Match Game where he can definitely bounce off the celebrities that they get. But Match Game is really going to depend on who they get as the celebrity panelists. Mm-hmm. Similar to Pyramid, which we'll touch on in just a little bit. But I feel like they don't really have trouble. There's definitely like a circuit of people that go around to all these games. Like you're, like when they mm-hmm. had million dollar pat. Like Betty White had better be on Match Game. Straight like I'm up. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. I mean, she's doing a lot. Now I'm going to ask her to fly out to New York. <laughs> Hot in Cleveland's done though. So, but yeah, she's, the only thing she's done recently is an episode of uh, NBC's uh, show with Miranda Cosgrove. I forgot the name of it. That's the most recent thing she's done so far. And so she's going to be on the To Tell the Truth. Revival well, is also coming this summer. Yes. <laughs> Allegedly. What's the word, We haven't even talked about that yet. <laughs> I hope so too. I mean, Betty Wright really is one of the few. I think there are no like real regulars from the original match game left. Betty and Charles are gone. Richard's gone. Um, and those were really like the regular regulars of uh, the semi regulars. Marsha's gone now, but perhaps we can have, you know, Betty. I don't know what Fanny's doing. If Fanny feels like coming out, Joyce, that would be nice. Patty, I, I love Patty. So, but Betty White definitely of the semi regulars is probably the. The biggest name to give. I didn't know you were on a first name basis with everybody on the match game staff. Patrick. <laughs> hey, howdy, hey, girl. How you yes, doing? Uh, for anyone not in the know, that's Patty Deutsch, that's Marsha Wallace, who we've lost, uh, Fanny Flag, and uh, Joyce Bielefont. The benefit of Betty White, she still has her sense of humor. She did then too. So, if not, if anything, it may be better at this point. Well, she was there's the certainly a novelty to hearing someone in their 90s say risque stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the That's whole reason she was on Hot in Cleveland in the first place. Because we just have so much stuff this episode, now we're going to move on to Pyramid. Because JJ went to Pyramid because we just haven't had JJ soliloquies enough since the last episode, <laughs> apparently. Hey, I did say last episode was the price is JJ. This is episode two of that. All right, JJ, you went to a Pyramid taping. How is it compared to other versions of Pyramid? And do you think, based on what you saw, that the show was going to be a success? I think if people liked the Pyramid with Dick Clark, like the the incarnations from the 80s with Dick Clark, I think they're going to like this. I think it is much better than you know, Donnie Mid, uh, which is Donnie Osmond's version of Pyramid. Simply because that version was very convoluted in the way that they not only played the game, but awarded the $100,000. This game is pretty straightforward. Uh, You play the six categories in the main game. Person with the highest score goes to the winner's circle. The first trip is worth $50,000. If the same person makes it back to the winner's circle, then it's $100,000. And unlike the 80s version where for the pyramid they would just bump your winnings up from 10 to $25,000 they're not going to give you an additional $25,000 this version will give you an additional $100,000 so instead of bumping your 50 to 100 if you make it back twice and you win you can get $150,000 it's a very warm pleasant set i think one of the biggest surprises is that while they do have monitors for the pyramids, both the winner circle and the front game pyramids, they flip. They're trilons. They're like trilons of monitors. So they're really going for a rather old school mixed with a modern neo look. And I think it works. Do you think that the categories that they provide are indicative of how the show used to be? Or do you feel like some of the stuff they're asking the contestants to come up with are a little out of left field? I think most of them are um, general things that we have used to, that we're used to seeing them ask for. Um, the category names, they had a little fun making references to some things that are current, but they still held true to 
simple things that people could easily guess in 30 seconds. Were the celebrities that you got well known? Uh, I saw an episode with Kathy and Jimmy and Rosie O'Donnell. And I'd say Rosie O'Donnell is, of course, very well known. Um, we've, I've been telling this to some members of my family. When I say Kathy and Jimmy and they give me the funny look, I'll be like, the fat nun from Sister Egg, but she's not fat anymore. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or you know, the secondhand witch to Bed Midler and Hocus Pocus. You know, and then, uh, oh, I, I, get, I get a lot of the people my age when they go like Kathy and Jimmy, I'm like, Hocus Pocus. And they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's great. But I, so I think they're pretty well known. And I'll, I'll say this now. I don't know when it's going to air. I'm not going to spoil it, but they both play the game extremely well. I can't speak for the other shows that they've taped, but I enjoyed the gameplay on this one a lot. How is Strahan as host? Strahan's good. Um, I've said it before. I didn't walk into the studio expecting to see the second coming of Dick Clark, but his that same friendly demeanor that you'd get on live with Kelly and Michael is the same thing you'll see here on uh, Pyramid. Of all the things that they've done, I think that everything has stayed the same with the exception of one thing. Um, there is no longer a tiebreaker round. They don't go into a, okay, did you like words that begin with the letter A and words that begin with the letter C? Uh, instead, what they do now is they take your cumulative time that you took to... Uh, get through all three of the categories that you went through, and the person that has the shorter time goes to the winner circle. And it's it's more than just seconds; like they count like nanoseconds or whatever. It's like you know you got this in you know eighteen point whatever seconds. You're going to the that's impossible, but you're going to the uh, winner circle. After they went to the winner circle during the commercial break, Michael came up and talked to the audience for a bit. And he explained how the old rules used to work for people that didn't know how the old rules in the 80s used to work anyway because there's different tiebreaker rules in the 70s and he said that simply that you know they just don't have enough time to run through another technically another two categories of pyramid so this is the next best thing and honestly i think it works out well now knowing how television works in the 2010s and how much stuff is edited down do you feel like they're going to end up editing pyramid episodes a lot based on what you've seen, or do you feel like it's going to move pretty fluidly? I think it moves pretty fluidly. I think they probably still are going to edit some stuff down because the whole intention is to put two episodes together. And so when we were done filming the first episode, they filmed an entirely new intro because they don't know if the episode was going to air in the front half of the hour or the second half of the hour. So they're still going to edit it down, but it's it's pretty good because just a you know quick note, I know I've talked, you know, I haven't talked that much, have I? No. I went to go see the episode, and it was going to be Kathy and Rosie, and it was only going to be one episode. And the people that were there before me saw two episodes. But apparently, Rosie and Kathy loved doing the game so much, and the show loved them so much, and they were so good at the game that they said... Can we do another? And just on a moment's notice, they said, all right, we're going to do another show. And like 20 minutes later, they got started on another show. And with the pickups and all, they refilmed a few other things in that second episode. They knocked the whole thing out in 35 minutes. Wow. So that's really, that is, really good. That shows that they have a well-oiled staff, too, that they know what they're doing. Actually, by the way, our warm-up man, his name is Tom Kelly. He's very good. He would prompt us one to applause because they want like mild applause during the winner circle after every category flip, like quick applause. Now stop. And he's, he's so he kept us entertained when they had the long stop down. He kept us entertained by playing games. I got to walk on the pyramid set and play a game of the dating game, which was fun from Tom Kelly is that Tom Kelly apparently got his start as a writer or like a, you know, production assistant on Rosie O'Donnell's old talk show. Oh, wow. And uh, so Rosie O'Donnell, you know, came up, talked to him, said hello to us and everything. And uh, he actually got a little emotional because, you know, Rosie was saying, you know, he's really good. He started on my show. Now he's just doing a bunch of stuff around New York. And he got emotional because, you know, it was like if it wasn't for her, like he's like, I know I'm not supposed to say who I'm rooting for. I'm rooting <laughs> for her because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. 
So it was really, it was a really nice taping. Just a great atmosphere. And when is Pyramid supposed to start? Do we have the exact? I'm sure I keep forgetting when Pyramid starts. It's Sunday Fun Day, and it'll be June the 26th, and it'll be Celebrity Family Feud at eight. Uh, and Pyramid at 9, and now what's interesting is that apparently Match Game is supposed to be added onto that at 10, but they just announced it. June is now, you know, two months away, so they're either they're going to either wait a little bit to put it in there, or they're going to start taping Match Game very quickly. It's going to be a really fun Sunday night during the summer. So many game shows. <laughs> I think it's interesting that we're getting all these game shows all of a sudden. It's like this new renaissance in the mid middle of the decade of all these properties we haven't seen in a while. Maybe it's just because, I don't know, lack of sports. So, I think Celebrity Family Feud probably helped. Like, yeah. They know they can get a prime time audience for these types of things. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I really, really hope for the best for these price specials that are coming up because I think that it can really, really open the door for the prices right anyway. All right. I'm curious to see how they handle this because it definitely seems like they've taped more episodes of Pyramid than they initially scheduled or had planned Well, for. if they're just able to toss one off randomly like yeah, they did, right? I mean... Take an episode in 35 minutes. Well, that, believe it or not, is actually... Almost wrapping things up for this episode of Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, a double stuff special as it, as it ended <laughs> up. That wasn't going to be the case. Now we talk about quick odds and ends. First off, we should mention we finally, for the first time this season, had a $100,000 winner on Wheel of Fortune. Yay. Yay. That is the most unenthusiastic. <laughs> it's <laughs> Wheel. I mean. Right. I think no, previously no, no, no. we had had a... Uh, one hundred thousand dollar loss, I believe. Yes. This yeah. Is yeah, yeah, but you're in the <laughs> tour goes that you didn't say yay, but but JJ and Triss, no no no. You need to go back to yay. We're fitting the atmosphere of the show. The Hey, I didn't get to really see it because Neither did I. There was a bomb threat at the television station it comes on in my area, so I just didn't get to see it. I mean, judging from the clip that we saw on, that I got to see online, it seems like everybody was waiting for this to happen. Like even after the whole hundred thousand and the confetti came down, Pat and Vanna hugged the contestants. So it's like they were waiting for this too. It's been a very long season of Wheel of Fortune. It really has. Do you think highly motivated was a tough puzzle to win the hundred thousand on? Somewhat. His picks were good. Yeah. But he had good picks. Yeah. He has a lot of letters in that puzzle, though. Like, you needed the I to get highly, because otherwise it's just the L. I had trouble getting motivated right away is the second word. Yeah, that was tough. I think the H's really helped him. Those were one of his choices. So I say good, good ups to that contestant. It's a well-deserved, like. well-earned $100,000, as opposed to <laughs> Leaky Fawcett, which you could argue was just handed. Does anybody have any other odds or ends they want to add real quick before we close the book on this episode? With all due respect, I do not want to make this episode I guess. long. <laughs> Just right? teacher spe- with the other two specials that we mentioned for Price, we also have a teacher special on Tuesday. And it'll be the first time that we see an episode taped past the primetime special, so maybe we get to see if Pushover or Punch a Bunch or It's in the Bag gets a ch- permanent change or if it's a one-off. Or any other games that we haven't seen stills of. Yes. They, they better be um, playing Do the Math on Tuesday. That's all I'm saying. They better do it. <laughs> Spelling B. In the time that we've been off, um, or I don't know if we mentioned it. Did we mention Patty Duke the first, the last time we were on? I don't think we did. Don't think she did. She passed away on the, uh, uh, I believe, the 29th of March. And she's, you know, she's not like a, like a huge person in game shows, but she certainly did her round of game shows i think one of the most memorable things that, sh- that i will remember her from is from the super password incident with uh rip taylor he mm-hmm. takes off the wig the testimony incident he th- somebody throws a stool it gets a little crazy um and, and uh, you know we've had a lot of deaths we you know doris roberts mm-hmm. and joey laura of china and prince, prince. And so, so we've had a lot of losses, but one that does relate to game shows, I thought I think was Patty Duke, and I just wanted to mention rest in peace to Patty Duke. So, I'd like to just mention for some absolute reason, her Twitter is still going after her death. <laughs> well, a lot of people's do. It's it's because sometimes it's not even run by them; it's run by whoever they're 
representative is. Uh, I recently posted about uh, something related to Isaac Hayes, and Isaac Hayes likes the tweet. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great, thanks. <laughs> and people still post on Joan Rivers' account too. And so it's it's just a thing that they do now. It's it's fun to think about. It. Not to let the episode go on any longer, but it's fun to think about how the world now with Twitter reacts. What what do you do with a Twitter account of a person who's died, particularly a famous person? This is like uncharted waters, and now we're slowly wading into them now that Twitter's become the omnipresence that it has become. And I guess to have one last thing in there, just like... One hey, last thing. <laughs> well, no, to tell the... Like the sh- like ABC itself, let's push to tell the truth all the way to the end. We know that it's getting taped, or that it's taped back in June, and they're just now pushing it to a random late night Tuesday slot. So, I mean, they taped this back in like June or July of last year. So, why have they held back onto it for so long? Maybe it's not very good. Just yeah, put it in the archive. Uh, well, it's, we'll it's get not, to it. It's not a good sign for it <laughs> that it uh, <laughs> that it's not doing well. Um, and finally. I'm sorry for laughing, but it's like episode number 20, The Lord of the Rings. (laughs) Right? (laughs) But there's just so much going on. We have a champion on Jeopardy who's doing rather well right now. Um, With a fun name, too Buzzy Cohen. I'm waiting to see (laughs) Busby Berkeley come on out and do a dance number with Buzzy Cohen. Um, I think he said, what, like five days now? Something like that? Yeah, he's a five time champ. Didn't we have a six so, day right before? We had a, we had a six day right before it and Andrew. And so, uh, yeah, after a while, after a long period of time without, you know, a consistent champ, we've gotten two back to back. So just mentioning it's that. It's been the longest drought, just to add that, it's been the longest drought ever without a five time champion between Matt Jackson and Andrew. Yeah. So, I, thought, wow. I thought it was since Matt Jackson we hadn't had a five day champ. So this is pretty it's pretty great to get back to that. And uh of course now that I've mentioned it he will lose on Monday. That's how this works. <laughs> But that is going to conclude this episode or pair of oh, episodes one thing, as it will. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> We're, done. We're done. We're done. One more thing. We can talk about this in the next episode. Sports Jeopardy was canceled. Oh, it's not yeah. canceled anymore. Sports Jeopardy will be coming back to not only Crackle, but to television. It'll be on NBC Sports Network. And maybe we'll talk about that next time. I hope There's we get so much for that to one. to talk about, but. It's you miss one time. week and everything happens. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> but that's going to end this episode for real now of contestants not appearing on stage. Thank you for joining us. If you have any comments on what we said, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. But on behalf of everyone else, this is Torgo. Go be more productive with your life. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to contestants not appearing on stage. Part of the Torgo Entertainment Network. For more episodes of Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, check us out on YouTube or online at cnaoscast.net. And thanks for tuning in to Gone with the Wind. For more information, go to torgoentertainment.com slash frankly, I don't give a damn. Everybody. Gone with the Wind? This is like <laughs> Ten Commandments level length right now. Yeah. Getting ready for no, all the prime time stuff. It's as big as a prime time gonna, special. The only thing I was going to do because I was time con, I would have, I, I held back because I was time conscious, unlike 90% of you, is that watch a price staffer actually have Synthesia. Watch the <laughs> <Synthesia>, show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm happy yeah. someone else knows what that is. Right? <laughs> I don't, so I don't, if, if you're going to split this in two, which I think um, I'm going to, perhaps it's then an hour the, seven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can leave it at one long one. I, we we're, 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 we can indulge ourselves in a gridiron graduates length episode every once in a while. <laughs> it's like a primetime special in ours. It's just so big. We're going all out. <laughs> I guess my question is, why did I guess my only concern is did we have to mention Tell the Truth? Did we have to mention Sports Jeopardy? I mean <laughs> there there are things that we talked about. Sure. Like we didn't even talk about five hundred questions or that. That was the, yeah, yeah, 
because 500 questions had nothing. Well, see, 500 questions is pretty straightforward so far. I mean, we have a premiere date for it, but that's about it. And I don't feel like looking at it. I think up. to tell the truth is just interesting because they held back for so long. Well, not only that, and perhaps you can talk about that on another episode. They held well, it yeah, back for so I, long, I, and it's going to be on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. I mean, you could market that as to tell the truth Tuesdays. It's T T T T T. That's great. <laughs> But it's Tuesdays at 10, like it's not a family show somehow. And it's after a remake of Uncle Buck starring Mike Epps. Like, everything about that sounds terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the original movie that much. But I guess my question is, why was something like To Tell the Truth so urgent that we had to mention it now? Because they brought it up earlier. I think, I, well, I, I think that we didn't have any, I don't think we've ever mentioned it since, like, the first time we, or we might have mentioned it in passing about how we're still waiting on it. And we mm -hmm. talked about all the other ABC game shows, so I felt that was, you know, Yeah, I something... felt like we had to talk about it. You want to date? Yeah, we played the dating game, and he pulled this woman aside, and he pulled myself up along with my brother and my cousin who were with me, and he pulled up another woman just to have a little fun because she would be she would be a bachelor, and uh, the woman he would tell the woman b back behind you know hidden whatever what questions to ask, and we'd give our responses. And I gave the best response. I gave responses so good that the warm up guy was like, "Is he a plant?" Like, because he's he knows how to give an answer. I honestly thought that that should woman, be in the episode, the dating game. I thought the woman was going to win because she was hilarious. Because they get to her and she just tries to deepen her voice, like, <laughs> "Well, baby, I would try to." Like, like, <laughs> She tried so valiantly. I you was should like, have done the date for the experience. Her. I had one of the American Gladiator girls ask me out when I did my internship at Sirius, and I turned it down because I was in a relationship at the time, and I should have taken it for the experience. I got back oh. from that job, and I call Caitlin, my girlfriend at the time, up on the phone, and I explained, like, look, Helga from American Gladiators was interviewed on the show that I'm interning with, and she asked me out over the air, and I politely turned her down, and she's like, you're stupid! Why didn't you do it? 